The wall is the first thing you see before you enter Bethlehem. In Hebrew, it's called the security fence. In Arabic, the wall of apartheid. As a foreign visitor, getting in and out is easy. You just stride through an Israeli checkpoint and emerge in Bethlehem, no questions asked. The wall looks different on the inside. The great concrete slabs are covered in drawings, encompassing every emotion from hope to despair. I visited Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, as they're referred to by the UN, back in November 2019. A year and a half later and I still don't know how to best talk about my experience and so I decided to let somebody else do the talking, Claire Anastas. Claire is the owner of the guest house my friend and I stayed at in Bethlehem. It's so beautiful, this is just absolutely precious. She spoke with such clarity and so much candor and I knew she'd be the perfect person to shed a bit of light on what is a hugely complicated situation. So here's Claire. Claire Anastas. I'm a mother for four children, two boys and two girls. I'm living here in Reish's tomb area in the main entrance of the Bethlehem city from Jerusalem, which it used to be the most vivid street for, uh, for everybody, for Jewish, Palestinian tourists. The area started changing since uh, they set up a military, the Israeli's military army camp in our backyard. It was like crossfire often uh, from 1996 to 2000, but to 2000 and 2001 it started more dangerous, more horrible, because they blocked the main road and became isolated, no work, no income, no life. The army used to come in uh, at midnight and if we delay it, they can Bomb the door. It's strange to listen to stories of bombs and snipers in Bethlehem, one of the holiest cities in the world and, according to the New Testament, the birthplace of Jesus Christ. The vast majority of Palestinians are Muslim, but to this day, Bethlehem has a sizable Christian community, including Claire and her family. And like them, many of Bethlehem's residents rely on tourism for their income, Rachel's tomb and the Church of the Nativity being the two most famous religious sites. And there are also dozens of hotels, tour companies, and my personal favorite, incredible restaurants, all of which depend on foreign visitors. But the construction of the wall hasn't just impacted the residents' livelihoods. It's essentially left them trapped. They put the wall in one day after they digged for two months. And when the children went to school, they came back, find themselves buried alive in a big tomb because of racist tomb. That's the impact of my youngest son, who was seven years old. And he, and he said to me, Mom, let us leave, please. His name is Daniel. I asked him to give us the last chance because we can make the life possible where it is impossible and we build, started building the guest house here started with inviting my friends and we have like a foreign bride getting married my cousin the army told her you are in the most safety place so stay there because they would protect the, the tourists because it's the uh, controlled by completely by Israeli uh, military army in this area. And we are controlled by them, but we don't have rights to ask back even if we pay property taxes to them or and other taxes to Palestinians. So we have, we cannot ask for any justice and right at all. So ima imagine we don't know to whom we are belong to uh, to ask for one justice and right. We are still affected. We are still struggling until now with the big issues just to force us to leave this place. To learn more about those who, like Claire, have decided to stay behind in Bethlehem, I headed to the Waldorf Hotel. It was started by famous British street artist and political activist, Banksy. And aside from being a hotel, it's also a museum, a museum dedicated to the biography of the wall. And it doesn't just tell the stories of the locals. It also shares an Israeli perspective and interviews with their soldiers. If you do visit, don't miss the small bookshop. The staff are extremely knowledgeable and eager to recommend books you might enjoy. I got a copy of Mornings in Janine by Susan Abelhawa and it ended up being one of the best books that I read in 2020. 
tell me about the role that kindness plays in your life. How are you able to stay kind when life is so tough? Yeah, this is what I decided to be. Like even when we used to welcome the army, we welcome them with a smile and the kindness. And we used to help some of them. And imagine they were like, it's confused. As we are like, we should be tough. When you give love and happiness and joy, you will get back the same, believe me. And people will feel shy to deal with you aggressively. And that's actually what saved our life from the arm. Who were aggressive, behaving with us. When they've seen that we are kind and like smiling and behave politely, we avoid not at least to crush my face with a gun or like we have many incidents happen. If we didn't act in this way, we would be killed or at least injured or cut hurt. We do love them, we forgive them, but the thing we cannot forget. The stories, it stays in the mind, in the memories, you know, in my children, childhood life. One of the saddest realizations when visiting the West Bank as a tourist is how different your experience is from the daily realities of local residents. It was so easy for my friend and I to explore the area. We visited Jericho, went for a dip in the Dead Sea. In short, we had a great time. But despite living so close to these incredible places, most Palestinians rarely visit. With all the checkpoints, physical roadblocks, and a huge Israeli military presence, it's hard even just to move from one village to another. And that's to say nothing about actually leaving the walled off area. Palestinians who live behind the wall can only leave if they have a valid permit, usually for purposes of work, trade, or medical treatment. They can only leave through gates available to them, about half of the 63 currently inside the wall. These gates only open for a few hours each day, and sometimes they don't open at all, like during Israeli holidays or following violent clashes. But again, none of these restrictions apply to foreign visitors, and I would really like to encourage you to visit. There are so many incredible places in the West Bank. There's Bethlehem, there's Jericho, the oldest city in the world. There's beautiful Naples, on which I have a whole separate video on my channel. Or how about a salt lake so big it's known as the Dead Sea? It's the lowest land point on Earth, and because of its water's high salt content, you can actually float on the surface. How's it going? Very good, very, good. very muddy, very healthy. And then there's the most famous city of them all, Jerusalem. Jerusalem's interesting for several reasons. It's considered holy by all three of the major Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Both Israel and the Palestinian Authority also claim the city of Jerusalem as their capital, although neither claim has much international recognition. It's too complex a topic to get into in this video, but worth reading up on because the status of Jerusalem remains a highly contentious issue. While you're in Jerusalem, visit the Temple Mound, where you will find the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, and don't miss the nearby Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall. And then just wander around the city, eat lots of food, and speak to everyone you meet, because it would be such a shame to visit this part of the world and not get perspectives from both sides in order to build empathy and a clearer picture of what is really going on in the lives of ordinary citizens, like Claire. Do you have any advice on how to be more kind? I advise everybody to, to choose what they want to be, at least for their dignity as a human being. Because with keeping your dignity, it, it gives you the strength and the power and love in your life. And, and nothing impossible if they try to solve things with a nice and a calm, but, but with the anger, everything would be complicated. Some people don't believe in God, but they can be kind, and very kind as well. Because they have pure emotion, pure hearts, and they can be kind without like, um, no need to learn the kindness. It, the most important is what the person decides to be himself. That's the most important. My own life, although admittedly very different from Claire's, has taught me similar lessons. 
We can't choose what happens to us, but we are always fully in charge of how we respond to it. And I often think about Claire when I find myself in difficult situations, because if she can live life with such positivity and kindness underneath the shadow of an eight meter wall, then so can any of us. Thank you for watching and see you next Friday.